poor thing the mouse was, and yet, when the lion got caught in a net, all his strength was no use. It was the poor little mouse who nibbled him out of the net. Small causes may produce great results. Hi there everyone, Mos Najmi here and today I have for you one of Aesop's uh, fables, The Lion and the Mouse. Now I'm going to narrate to you the Thomas Bivick version and then the Jeffrey's Taylor version and will also include the moral application that comes with this story. I hope you enjoy this episode. The Lion and the Mouse Thomas Bivick version A lion having laid down to take his repose under the spreading boughs of a shady tree. A company of mice scampered over his back and waked him up. Upon which, starting up, he clapped his paw upon one of them and was just going to put it to death when the little suppliant implored his mercy, begging him not to stain his noble character with the blood of so small and insignificant a creature. The lion, touched with compassion, instantly released his little trembling captive. Not long after, traversing the forest in search of his prey, he chanced to run into the toils of the hunters, and not being able to disengage himself, he set up a loud roar. The mouse hearing the voice and knowing it to be the lion's, immediately repaired to the place and bade him fear nothing for that he was his friend. Instantly he fell to work and with his little sharp teeth gnawed asunder the knots and fastenings of the toils and set the royal brute at liberty. The Lion and the Mouse Jeffrey Taylor Version A lion with the heat oppressed one day composed himself to rest. But whilst he dozed as he intended, a mouse his royal back ascended, nor thought of harm as Aesop tells, mistaking him for something else, and travelled over him and round him and might have left him as he found him. But had he not, tremble when you hear, tried to explore the monarch's heir, who straight away woke with wrath immense, and shook his head to cast him thence. You rascal! What are you about?" said he when he had turned him out. I'll teach you soon, the lion said, to make a mouse hole in my head. So saying, he prepared his foot to crush the trembling tiny brute. But he, the mouse, with tearful eye, implored the lion's clemency, who thought it best at last to give his little prisoner a reprieve. Twas nearly twelve months after this, the lion chanced his way to miss, when pressing forward, heedless yet, he got entangled in a net. With dreadful rage he stamped and tore, and straight commenced a lordly roar. When the poor mouse, who heard the noise, attended, for she knew his voice, then what the lion's utmost strength could not affect, she did at length. With patient labour she applied her teeth the network to divide, and so at last, forth issued he, a lion, by a mouse, set free. The Moral Application of the Lion and the Mouse Now Jeffrey Taylor's further says about the moral application, which I just narrated, Few are so small or weak, I guess, but may assist us in distress. Nor shall we ever, if we are wise, the meanest or the least despise. There are two conclusions, two moral applications, which are intertwined within the story, one of them being that a kindness is never wasted, and the other one that small causes may produce great results, as we heard in the opening intro crane poetry uh, version. Now let me uh, read out the moral application according to Thomas Buick, and from it we can understand the conclusions that we are supposed to draw, perhaps. Now he says, 
they who generously shower benefits on their fellow creatures seldom fail of inspiring the great bulk of them with a benevolent regard for their benefactors and often receive returns of kindness which they never expected. Mercy is of all other virtues the most likely to kindle gratitude in those to whom it is extended and it is difficult to find an instance of a conqueror who ever had occasion to repent of his humanity and clemency. The fable gives us to understand that there is no person in the world so little but even the greatest may at some time or other stand in need of his assistance and consequently it is good to shew favor when there is room for it towards those who fall into our power. As the lowest people in life may upon occasion be able either to serve or hurt us, it is as much our interest as our duty to behave with good nature and lenity towards all with whom we have any intercourse. A great soul is never so much delighted as when an opportunity offers of making a return for favors received and a sensible man, however exalted his station, will never consider himself secure from the necessity of accepting a service from the poorest. So there he explains intermingled within his moral application about these two concept that a kindness is never wasted and small causes may produce great results. And as Jeffries Taylor said, few are so small or weak, I guess, but may assist us in distress, nor shall we ever, if we are wise, the meanest or the least despise. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. Until next time, take care, be good, and thank you so much for listening.